In this video, we're going to go over secant lines and average rates of change. All right, so what's a secant line? So a secant line intersects your graph at exactly two points. Uh, and it turns out that the slope of the secant line is what we refer to as the average rate of change. All right, for example, not for example, but for illustration purposes, uh, consider this following graph here. So our green graph here, a parabola, a quadratic. Let's call it f of x. All right, so we have the, the function here, f of x in green, and then I have two points in blue here. All right, and so if I want to connect those two points with a line, let me see if I could do this here. All right, this line, it's a little crooked, don't judge, uh, but my line here is what's referred to as a secant line. Okay. So what's useful of a secant line? Well, a secant line, as I said earlier, the slope of the secant line gives us the average rate of change as we move from one point to the other point. All right. And in fact, I'm going to show you we're going to actually come up with the formula ourselves here. What I mean by that is let's get, let's give some ordered pairs here to these two points here. So oh, let's see if I can squeeze it in here. So this leftmost point, let's give it the coordinate x. So the x value is x, and let's say the y value is f of x. So if you remember your function notation, f of x is representative of the, the x value, or assume of the y value. And then over here, I am going to call this second order pair here, I'm going to give it the x coordinate of x plus some distance, which I like to use the, the uh, notation delta x. Okay, if you remember in previous videos we talked about slopes, remember delta x is just the difference between x2 and x1. It's the same deal here. So what I'm saying is the distance in between x and x plus delta x is just the delta x. So we're going to label this second order pair as, let's see here. So the x coordinate of this second order pair is going to be the x plus delta x. And which means that the y value is going to be f of whatever that x coordinate is. So f of x plus delta x. Okay. I know this seems super abstract right now, but it'll be clear in just a few minutes. All right. So we have two ordered pairs here. And so as we learn way back in the day, we know that, hey, anytime I have two ordered pairs, how do I find the slope between them? Well, it's the whole y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And so what I want to do lastly here is I want to label up what's acting like X2, what's acting like X1, so on and so forth. So let me get a different color here. So basically, X1 is our X value. Y1 is going to be F of X. X plus delta X, that's your X2. Your Y2 is F of X plus delta X. So putting all that information together, okay, the slope of the secant line which is also your average rate of change. Is the following formula, OK? So we know it's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, right? But let's use the notation that we have here. So what's our y2? It's uh, f of x plus delta x, OK? minus y1, which is alpha, f of x, all right, over x2, which is x plus delta x, minus x1, which is just x, okay? All right, next thing, look at your denominator. I'm going to simplify that denominator. I got x plus delta x minus x. That means these x's are going to cancel, and I am left with Slide this over a little bit. I am left with f of x plus delta x minus f of x all over delta x. And that, folks, is our formula for the average rate of change. Okay? Now, 
you've actually seen this formula before in your previous algebra classes. In fact, what they probably did was they, instead of using delta x, they probably used a different letter. We call these dummy variables. You can use whatever letter that you want. Let's say you wanted to use h instead. Then the average rate of change becomes f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. This is called the difference quotient. Okay? These are synonymous. But for the sake of this homework, folks, I just want you guys to realize, listen, to find the average rate of change is just the same as finding the slope between two ordered pairs. Get your x1, x2, get your y1 and y2, and then you just follow your normal slope formula. Okay? Let's walk through an example together here. All right. So for example... Suppose f of x is x squared minus 3x plus 1. Let's find the average rate of change um, between, let's see, x equals a negative 1 and x equals 3. <coughs> okay? All right, so the first thing we need to do is we need to say, okay, let's identify our x1 and x2. What's x1? x1 is your first x-coordinate. Let's just say it's a negative 1. What's your x2? It's your second x-value, which is 3. Okay. How do I find y1? Well, y1 is when you take your x1 and plug it into your function. So y1 is f of x1, which just means take your x1, plug it into your function. So I'm plugging it into my f of x, so it's going to be a negative 1, quantity squared, minus 3 times a negative 1, plus 1, which works out to give me a negative 1 squared. Be careful here, it's a positive 1. So it's a positive 1, plus 3, plus 1, which equals... Uh, 1 plus 3 is 4, 4 plus 1 is 5. Okay? All right. What's y2? y2 is f of x2, meaning just take your second x coordinate and plug it on in. So that's going to be 3 squared minus 3 times 3 plus 1, which ends up being 9 minus 9 plus 1 which ends up being just 1. 9 minus 9 is 0, plus 1 is 1. So then what's the average rate of change? The average rate of change, which is the slope of the secant line, same difference, is y2, 1, minus y1 of 5, over x2 minus x1. 3 minus a negative 1. So this is a negative 4 over 3 plus 1, which is a positive 4. And we get a slope of negative 1. So the average rate of change of negative is negative 1. So finding the average rate of change, folks, is no different than finding the slope between two ordered pairs. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video.